Hello everybody. Uh, in this video we're going to try and make a um, bag that is a um, crossbody, everyday, useful little bag um, as a companion for this little cutie. Let me see. Okay. Um, which is already published and I'm going to leave a link down below. This is a much bigger bag so um, what we're going to make today is going to be something a bit more simple, a bit quick and easy, um, similar to something I've designed before, but this one's going to have a different kind of shell stitch um, in its design. So we're going to start with chaining 25 at random. <laughs> Uh, you can chain more. I mean, after you've chained 25, you can see how big it is. I mean, you can literally adjust how big, how wide the bag is going to be. So I'm going to make 24 chains now. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 24, 25. Um, I have a book next to me as a guideline. And um, yeah, it will fit. It's not very thick, so it should fit perfectly actually. Um, in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to make a single crochet. Then I'm going to skip two and work a shell made with double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, double crochet. So that's three double crochets with chains in between. We're going to skip two again, single crochet. Skip two, shell again, so sh um, double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, double crochet, single crochet, shell, Uh, skip two, single crochet, skip two, shell again, we're going to skip just one and work single crochet in the corner, we're going to turn work Skip one again and work shell in the next one. Skip two, single crochet, skip two. Shell. Skip two. Single crochet. Skip two. Shell. Two single, skip two shell, and let's see what we've got here. 
and skip to single and instead of joining we've got six shells two four six eight shells um, instead of joining to the first single crochet if you can see it here we're going to work a shell in it so we're not joining rows we're going to work in a spiral Does that work so far? So now we're going to work in the middle double crochet of this shell. We're going to put a single crochet here, and in this single crochet, we're going to put a shell, and so on. Single, shell, single, shell, single. All the way around and we're going to keep going until the bag is as tall as the book let's say or you can make it shorter it depends up to you um, but that's what I'm going to do so single shell all the way around in a spiral on and on and on until you made it the height you want it So again, we're working single crochet in the middle of the shell and shell in the single crochets of the previous row. And we've literally, I've literally finished another row here. So it will go quickly. It's not a big bag. You can make it wider by chaining more and you don't really need to know how many you need to chain to start it. Just start and fit shells and stitches in as you can as you go along. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's not a garment. That's my excuse. I, I don't like planning too much. I like going with the flow and I think we can design much better, much quicker if we just go with the flow. Shell in the single crochet. Single crochet in the middle of the shell. And again. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video now. This is it, what we've got so far. bottom of the bag.
Okay, so I've just finished making the main body of the bag and I placed the newly wrapped book <laughs> inside to check for size because, um, I mean, as I started, it looked like it might not fit because um, <clears throat> if you take the bottom um, chains, um, they might start and finish here, which is not big enough for the book. But the stitch is very lacy, which means um, it has a lot of stretch. So sometimes you have to understand how this bit will work and not so much the beginning because the beginning doesn't need to stretch so much. But the fabric itself is very stretchy, it stretches sideways, stretches in both directions, in fact. So um, it will mold to whatever you put in it. Obviously, if you if you want to put something that forces it to sit in a specific width or height, uh, you have to make sure it's hard enough to keep it in place, like cardboard or plastic or um, I don't know anything that will be stronger than the tension the fabric is creating. Um, so what I did was um, just continue in a spiral, rows and rows and rows until. I knew it will fit the bag after I add an extra, I don't know, centimeter or two of a border. So I'm going to show you next how to make the border. And seamlessly, we're going to attach a strap um, as big as you want it, obviously. I'm going to make it quite small for myself because um, this will be a handheld little bag just to carry um, my keys, perhaps. They're quite big, so they're not going to go through car keys and everything so it will not fall out and this cute little bag and in the next video um, I thought I would film how I created this wrapping because as you noticed at the beginning my book didn't well the cover I didn't like it because um, if I model a bag like this one plain and simple easy to make um, or a diary cover, which I, I think I've made about two or three designs. I'm not sure how many. Um, you can find them in my uh, shop. I might link it below. They're both very cute. Um, so what happens is, if I want to model this with something hard inside, for example, if it's a diary, obviously I'm going to put the diary inside. If it's a bag that you carry little books to read on your walks or whatever, um, you don't want to see the cover through it won't show very nicely it'll be like higgledy piggledy lots of silly colors poking through and you won't see the laces nicely um so what i do is usually i wrap them in white this is a printing paper a4 so i because it's a small book um obviously if you want to do this with bigger bigger books or big objects um you'll need bigger paper as well but luckily i had exactly what i needed um and as you can see, I've already started doodling, which is something I do all the time. If it's a blank piece of paper, it needs to have something on top. <laughs> um, but it won't show through the bag, so it's fine. It's, it's not disturbing me. <laughs> so what I did um, was wrap this uh, book in white so that it shows the stitching very nicely. And um, I finished a row... Uh, with a single crochet in one of the sides of the bag so you could finish here or here it doesn't matter um, I would say make sure the front and the back are the same size um, sort of the same size because we went in a spiral so it won't be like exactly the same um, but it won't show at the end um, now we're going to add a little um, edge and I thought, what could we do? So, because we finished in a single crochet, we could um, continue in a spiral still um, with a back loop single crochet. So, we're working in every stitch and chain we have so that um, it doesn't shrink. So, we, we really need to work in everything. And we need to work relaxed as well. I've got a 4mm with DK yarn, so... If you think that your um, tension is quite tight, I would suggest moving up a hook. I don't know, 4.5. I mean, I could work with 4.5, so you see what happens in the end. 
Um, it will just ensure that because this is quite stretchy sideways, but this way as well, it's a stretchy fabric. Um, if you work with smaller stitches on and on and on, like single crochet, uh, you perhaps have to adjust either your tension, which is quite hard to do. Most people won't know how to adjust the tension or go up in hook size. But you, what you need to make sure is that you work relaxed and um, whatever you use it for, for me, it's quite important because I need to be able to fit that bag in here. Um, so we'll see what happens. It's, it's a bit of an experiment. I'm anticipating catastrophe here um, because I need it to fit my bag exactly at the um, top, um, the entry of the bag. So I'm, I'm kind of making a mental note to myself, work relaxed, work relaxed, so, so that I'm not shrinking the fabric. Because single crochet is a very small stitch and it's not very forgiving. So um, the same with Trinity Stitch. I use Trinity Stitch in my designs all the time. And if I try and meet, meet um, stitch count um, in double crochet, it, it won't have the same effect as a same stitch count with single crochet or trinity stitch it will be much tighter fabric there so um which is a worry because when i design um not a worry so much as in um watch out <laughs> um so when i i design garments like women's sweaters i have to make sure i use the right stitch combination so that it doesn't create extra work like too much extra work because you have to make sure the increase and the sizing afterwards is more important than stitch counts and things like that so I don't know it might not make sense to you but um, because the main guideline as a designer um, that I personally use is stitch counts so if let's say I worked on I don't know 10 women's sweaters and had similar stitch count the end of the yoke that's the most important bit the yoke the, the end of the yoke has to be the right length has to be the right width and stitch count is not so important but if if you've got like a recipe it's kind of like having a recipe you've been working with for a while and you know what you're doing but when I switch from a design that has longer stitches to a design that has shorter stitches I have to adjust stitch count all the time um, yes it's tricky can be tricky which is why the note to relax to make sure the fabric is very or at least as stretchy as the bottom bit of the main body of the bag so I'm on my second row of back loop single crochet back loop so that's the front loop that's the back loop and you work your single crochet in it so it's a very easy way to finish the bag um, just to give it a bit of texture I guess you can do other things you can um, you can work just single crochet without worrying about loops and texture and stuff like that or you can work trinity stitch that's a beautiful stitch quite quite nice i work with that a lot okay looking good it's it's showing me that it's not uh too tight here so that's good that's good um don't know how many rows to make two three so one this is the second um, it's hard to see what's going on I think it'll show better if it was a light color white or but for some reason I wanted to work with green today 
and I made a point of doing that yesterday. <laughs> I was talking about making this bag and I thought all I could think about was green and I had two options. This is the other green. So this was a bit lighter but not not what I wanted. I couldn't see this bag in that color. So we ended up with this. This is the third row. Then I'm going to seamlessly create a little handle maybe. If you're making a crossbody strap, I could do that, I'm not sure. You have to make sure it's long enough. So probably start it at one end, get to the other end, slip stitch or join with the other end and then put it on you to see if it'll sit how you want it to sit. One, two, three. Okay, so almost there. And I'm going to end with, probably make it flat first to see where the corner is, or the side of the bag. I'm going to end by working in both loops. So I'm going to make a normal single crochet. Right, so from here, I'm going to make a strap by chaining. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Wow, that's a tiny one. Tiny little handle that will be big enough not to tighten the bag and come out the way when I put the book in. So obviously this is just 30. I think I counted 30. If you want it to go all the way around your body you'll probably need over 100 stitches. 100 plus another 100. Yeah probably 200 stitches. 200 chains. Just have a go. See what happens. So now I'm gonna Turn the bag around and um, single crochet on this end, somewhere in the middle, single crochet, and I'm going to do another single crochet to um, kind of give the width of the band, the the handle to show the width. So what I'm going to do next is work single crochet all the way through in every chain. One, two, three, and so on. All the way to the end. This pattern um, does not exist. I literally made it up as I went along. I made all the decisions on the go. Um, 
obviously with feedback from the book and how it fits. <laughs> so it's not difficult to design, but it's fun and useful. And um, you can add all kinds of things to it. You can add flowers, you can decorate it. You can make it bigger, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's not difficult. Anyone can do it. Um, so I chose this texture because it's um, matching the bag I've just designed and published. And I thought it'd be cute. To have this and the other one together. in my wardrobe. This one's a quicker, more grab-and-go kind of bag. So, right. Now we're going to work single crochet in this one. As we reach the end. So this is how wide it is. If you want it wider, you can work another single crochet at the side. Turn it and then work your way through with another row of single crochet. Obviously if it's a cross body bag it's best to make this as wide as possible so that it um, doesn't dig into your skin when you're carrying stuff. If it's, if it's going to be used for heavy things like water bottles or... I mean, you can, you can fit it. You can, you can match the size of the bag to use it for anything you want. I've seen plenty of water bottles designed just like this, plain and simple. Some might have a circle bottom. You can make a amigurumi circle with all the videos available on YouTube. And then use this pattern to make the the rest of the bag. So you don't really have to know how many stitches to start or anything like that. Just just start. And then problem solve as you go along. That's the easiest way to design. Just uh, right. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna make a slip stitch to close out or should I? I don't know. Either way, I think. Is there another single crochet here? Maybe. I'm not sure. Well, let's see how it looks. Ta -da. Anyway, you finish off here. I'm just going to put a red marker so that it doesn't unravel. And voila! It's a cute little handle and now we get to test the fitting of the bag in here right I'm just gonna stretch it sideways first Perfect fit. So here it is. Without lining, it's obviously going to take a while to put the book in. 
but it doesn't seem to need lining. I mean, I like to see the stitching here. And the lining, if you put lining in here, you have to make sure you put, um, you decide the width of the back or height, height or width, because it's a stretchy fabric. So um, if you want it to be this width, make sure the lining fits this width, not after it shrinks, because this fabric is a, has its own mind. It will just go all over the place. Um, it will probably shrink back. But if you want to put lining, make sure the lining is the correct size to fit the need, to fit what you want to put in it. Because if you're leaving the bag to shrink and then measuring for lining, it's obviously going to end up with a small lining. <laughs> yeah, so make sure you measure things properly before you cut. Woohoo! Love it. So, what you could do next is um, I have a pattern for this flower. It's free on my YouTube channel. Um, it's just this size. So, if you want to, it's this one. Here it is. If you want to decorate your bag, you can add little flowers to it. Or, I see this one as well. Too much now so these are all kind of the same flower with different top added to it right that's if you want to decorate it you can sew it on you can some people use hot glue I don't know if it's good enough <laughs> it might be um, what else can you do or you could put the flowers on the handle. You can make a flowers handle. Or you could add a pom pom. <laughs> Getting carried away here. Cute. Mm. Yeah, very eclectic. Look at that. <laughs> or you could hang one of these guys. I like tiny amigurumi and some people are crazy enough to work with really tiny yarn and hooks. Uh, I've never tried it. The miniature <laughs> amigurumi, never tried it. This is as mini as it gets for me. Or, hang on, <laughs> definitely no smaller than that. <laughs> I think this was 3mm hook or 3.5 and a 4 ply. So yeah. <laughs> This was hard work. This is actually published in my Ravelry shop as well. If you want to use it as a, a keychain. Let me use this thing. Uh, just to poke it around. You could add it to the bag. That's so cute actually. I love a bunny on a bag. <laughs> See, it doesn't look right, but yeah. Oh, wow. my kids would love this. <laughs> oh, yeah, these bags could be really cute for kids. I don't know what they would put in it. Obviously, I don't usually see children with bags because what, what are they to carry, you know? But if they're going, I don't know, to a friend's house and they want to take some cards to play cards with or a favorite toy or something, you can. Ooh, let me grab a toy. Right, so let's get all of this out and fit a toy in here. Oh boy! <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh yeah, this could totally work. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, sweet. Meerkat. You can you can put a meerkat in here and disappear with it home. <laughs> um, yes, I'm not gonna show this to my youngest. She's kind of wanted, but there's no. She never really uses bags. She's too young. Right, that's it for the demonstration. So again, 
Um, I hope you liked it. And I hope it made sense and that you can apply it to something you want to fit in it. Whatever that may be. Water bottle. Let me try a water bottle. I have Evian here. This is probably not big enough, but you never know. It's quite stretchy. Oh my gosh. Right, with all the stretch. Whew. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know what else you can put in it. I mean, as a photo prop, uh, you could probably put flower bouquets in here. I've seen plenty of um, designers use flowers. Um, I'm not going to get my artificial ones out. As a natural flower. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so you could create your own bag. Just just by watching this, you can kind of use like your favorite stitch or something. And you can create your own. And if you do, leave me a comment with the link or something. So I can see it as well. That would be fun. Okay. I'm going to stop here. Um... I'm going to quickly, I don't know, edit this and post it for you. And I hope you like it. And soon, this is coming. I'm really excited. I mean, it's going to take more brain power, so I'm trying to run out of cute little things to make so I can get on with big things to make. Um, and that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to learn how to wrap a book just for show. Like if you're using books to model little bags like these. I, I really love um, wrapping books. Very easy. It'll be a, just a very, very quick tutorial. Anyway, see you soon. Bye-bye.